Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Saints Unscripted podcast. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. And today's episode is going to be a little different. I don't have a guest with me, nor do I have a topic to really talk about. But a few weeks ago, we had you ask me questions for a little Q&A episode. And today I'm combining both of them. We have a Christmas Q&A, even though maybe none of the questions are related to Christmas, but excited to, you know, have the tree and all this stuff that basically... Martha, my wife, provided for me. And today is December 20th. If you're watching it the day it releases, we have five days until Christmas. So sorry if you're watching in like January, February, where it's like 300 to 350 days until Christmas, which is really sad. So apologize for the downer there. But we're going to ask and I'm going to really try to answer all of these questions. And before I begin, I'm really sorry about the Facebook questions. I know we asked twice, but Facebook was being a little difficult and we couldn't get the questions from them. And I heard there were some really good ones. So if I didn't get to your question, it was probably because of that, because I'm going to really try to answer all of them that I have here with me. And so if I didn't answer your question, please comment below that question. And I'll, you know, be in the comments as I usually am. And I'll try to engage with you there or DM us or, or maybe future Q and A questions and Q and A episodes, unless this episode's really boring and I'm really boring and we won't get into that. But anyway, I'll start right now. So how can we know if the leaders of the church handle tithing well and not for themselves? And I think that's a really tough one. How can we know that? I don't know if we can ever know that. I'll tell you what I think, though. I think our tithing really isn't used perfectly. I don't think it's used. Maybe maybe we can say it's used well, generally. I don't think the leaders, at least the higher ups, like a lot of the general authorities, I don't think they misuse tithing or they take advantage of our tithing, but I don't think that the church uses it perfectly well. I think there's a lot of places, and I've noticed this too and witnessed this myself, that I've seen tithing be misused a little bit. And and I'm not saying like it's completely used for bad purposes or selfish purposes, but I definitely think that it could be used better, and I don't believe that it's used perfectly well. But does that change my testimony of it? No, I, I think just the act of me paying tithing itself, wherever it goes, really, it's just between me and God and, and I'll continue to keep paying tithing. Can we see all of your pets? Yes, you can enjoy this montage of me, all these jump cuts of me holding my pets. Okay. This is the first shot of the montage. These are my two kitties. This is Sophie and this is Calcifer. This is my sweet girl, Livy. She's nine years old. Okay, and this is our Peter's Banded Skink. We love her. She's so pretty. We just got her about a year ago. And I would love to show you our final pet. We have a banana ball python. It's so, he's so cool. His name is Keller Brimbor, and we got him about six months ago. So he's about two, two feet long, maybe a little longer now. But we just fed him last night, and so he's got a still big bulge, and he's trying to digest that, and he doesn't really like to be handled right after he eats. Next question, what's your favorite scripture and why? That's a oh, that's a tough one. I don't know if I can think of a specific one. I tend to lean towards scriptures that talk about Jesus extending mercy and grace and love to those that are either sinners or... They've made a lot of mistakes or those that feel down or feel less than and how he kind of comes and restores that honor, restores that love. Uh, I, those those are my absolute favorite, especially the prodigal son. Ooh, that one, that, that one has been amazing, especially impactful lately in my life. What's your favorite color? Why has it ever changed? Yeah, it, uh, my first favorite color was green when I was young. Then it changed to blue, I think late teen years and early 20s. And now it's red, as you can tell. I always wear these red glasses. I do also love yellow, but you can't really wear red and yellow a whole lot. At least I, I just I just fear that I'm looking like a McDonald's logo. <laughs> but anyway, yes, it has changed. And red is definitely my favorite color right now. Jake, will we ever be graced by your glorious mustache again? Yeah, I hope so. Actually, so the episode that came out last week, which was about the lost 116 pages with Don Bradley, I actually had a a little bit of a mustache growing and I was excited to share that all with you, but it wasn't really in great form. It was really short and it kind of looked 
weird, not not great on me. And Martha suggested that I shave it for that episode. So I would love for that mustache to come back. And if you if you haven't seen it, there's a, I think there's a few episodes or one episode on Saints Unscripted that I was in for a little bit. I think it was the quarantine stories episode. So if you want to check that out, I'm towards the end of that. Has being involved with Saints and Scripted had any impact on your testimony? Definitely, of course it has. Being someone who's constantly working on Saints and Scripted content, you know, with the middle, I love working on the middle with Gaina Lynn, and definitely she has had a huge impact. Her and her show has had a huge impact on my testimony. She's an absolutely amazing person. All the people on Saints and Scripted, currently we have Justin, Sam, Taylor, and David and other people behind the scenes of Saints and Scripted, and they probably wouldn't like me to say their name. <laughs> but they know who they are. They're absolutely amazing. And, and, and just working on content constantly and trying to come up with content, not apologetically really, but just to make positive, faith-affirming content in general is, has been amazing for me. How many pairs of glasses do you own? Nine. I own nine pairs of glasses. And hopefully I'll cycle through all of them through uh, all the future and past episodes so you can see them all. <laughs> Next question. Who in your life is your biggest example for following the gospel and staying active in the church? Oh, I wish I had a lot more time to think about this, but maybe, maybe I'll just say this. There's a lot of people in my life that are amazing examples in and out of the church, but I guess this question is specifically for staying active in the church and believing in the gospel. Out of the plethora of people in my life that could definitely fill that role, I'll just say someone who's popped into my mind, and it's my mom and my brother, Josh, my twin brother. I'm a twin, by the way. They definitely, just seeing their hearts and their Christ-like love and service towards others and just their, their amazing conviction and zeal to follow the gospel humbly and quietly, though that's, that's one of my favorite examples of following the gospel and staying active in the church. Really a big inspiration. Do you feel pressure to stay active and excited about the church due to your job? Yeah. <laughs> I make content constantly, you know, faith affirming content that's rooted in the restored gospel. So definitely I, but I don't, I don't feel hindered by that. I don't feel like my journey will be changed because, oh, I got to keep this job or I got to keep making faith affirming content rooted in the restored gospel. But yeah, it does because I don't really like change, but it's not a negative pressure and it's a definitely a self-induced pressure uh, because I love the gospel. On topics of faith crises, what do you hope the light at the end of the tunnel is? Definitely, I hope that I stay in the church, that I keep my testimony, that I continue in my faith and belief in the restored gospel really i because i love the restored gospel i love all of the truths i love all the covenants that i've made i love the, the restored doctrine of jesus christ that we receive through the, the restored gospel so i really hope that i stay in the church but again i'm not going to try and force it because ultimately i want to be authentic and true to myself and i want to be sitting in church right and not feeling like a fraud to myself and not feel like i i'm not being authentic because I definitely currently sit in church and feel like, why am I here? I don't feel like being here. So I, I hope that changes and I hope I can, you know, figure some of those doubts out and hopefully not just throw them away or hide them under the rug or anything, but that I can work through them and I can sit in this place. Yeah, if you if you want to check out the mindfulness episode with Jacob Hess and Dan Ellsworth, that's a that's a really cool episode on talking about mindfulness and making decisions moving forward with your faith. What place on earth helps you feel closest to God? Now, I'd love to say the temple. I feel like that's a pretty generic answer though, but it's it's generic for a reason because I've been in the temple and I've definitely felt close to God. I felt the spirit, but I haven't been in a while and that's not a pandemic excuse. It extends way further back than that. <laughs> the church, at church, no. Not really, especially lately. At home, sure, sometimes, I guess. Uh, I guess I'll just say what's popped into my head. And I want to say the ground. <laughs> uh, I, I think that I'm definitely referring to praying, kneeling. I've definitely prayed in the car, w walking around, taking a run, and doing other things. But I feel like when I can get on my knees, I can feel that because it puts me in a state of mind because I my attention is always going everywhere. So when I can kneel and feel like I'm putting my 
self in a place where I can feel that, that's where I feel closest. So the ground, have you ever heard that one? The ground? You probably heard someone say it when I'm praying. So maybe that's not a, maybe that's not a completely original answer. Where do you get your style inspiration? My style inspiration, that was the last question, by the way. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm just, uh, I just, I don't know if I really have a style. I don't really have an identity. I'm like a company who just keeps creating new logos and new brand identities. <laughs> I, I just love color. I love color. I love the re color red. So I have some red shoes. I have some yellow shoes, blue shoes, white shoes. I don't know. That's not really a color, but I just love color. I love 90s colors, how they clash and mix sometimes. And maybe, maybe eventually I'll start incorporating more 90s motifs into my wardrobe. I don't know, but I, I just love color. I love nineties color. Anyway, I, I don't know if that's a really great answer. I'm not an expert on all that, but that was the last question. Thank you so much for all those that asked questions. And thanks so much for those asked questions on Facebook that we totally missed. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Comment below. If you, if you are one of those Facebook questioners, I would love to get into the comments or if you weren't one of those, ask another question in the comments and I'll, and I'll be there. I'll be answering. I'll probably answer most questions unless it's a mean question or a question that I don't really know how to respond to, like some abstract church history question that I'm definitely not an expert on. But anyway, thanks again for uh, asking all those questions. Hopefully we can do this again sometime. It's kind of fun for me and uh, really grateful that people actually have questions for me <laughs> i thought part of me thought when we sent that out that i was like oh we're not going to get any questions and no one cares and i'm boring but anyway hopefully i'm not boring comment below if you think i'm boring i'm just kidding well maybe you can if you know it, it, helpful feedback you know always helps and uh thanks for sticking around for all these questions and for this whole season of faith crisis that we're having and future seasons that we'll have too hopefully i'm really grateful that we've gotten a great that we've got a great response. We've had some amazing guests and we have amazing guests lined up in the future. And so please subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Uh, we'll, we try our best to get one out every Sunday. Sometimes I drop the ball and I'll miss a Sunday. So I apologize for that too, because we have some really awesome viewers and listeners that wait for those each Sunday. And Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I hope you have a great holiday season. I know the holiday season can be triggering. It's definitely triggering for me. But uh, Gainel ended an awesome episode about that. We also have awesome episodes about Christmas. But thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.